What's up, people? Episode 75 for Dragon Ball Super. Uh, super crazy stuff happened. It was a really good episode, but we got an exclusive trailer for the survival arc that's coming up next. So let's get straight into the review. One thing I say it always keeps. Simso starts off with Goku training, he's got no one to train with. Chi Chi asks him to train out in the field where he can also plow the field at the same time. Whis has to go to a god summit, Vegeta is preoccupied for some reason, probably due to the fact that he's having a baby pretty soon. None of that was said, I just thought I'd chuck that in there. Piccolo is taking care of business with Dende, so the only one left to train is Gohan. Gohan's still kind of on this weird buzz, like he says that he doesn't fight anymore, but then he goes, oh, I know someone that will. He presses his watch, becomes the Great Saiyan Man, so now Goku fights the Great Saiyan Man. And it was honestly a really good fight. I mean, obviously, Goku, if he turned Super Saiyan Blue, could have killed Gohan, like, quite easily. But the good part about it is when we see Gohan as Great Saiyan Man, he has the urge to fight. He's keen to fight. He wants to do it. Seems like he really enjoys it a lot more as well. He's enjoying the fight with Goku. They get a bit overboard. They both go Super Saiyan, uh, destroy the whole field. That's when Chi Chi puts it to an end. But again, not as one sided as I thought. Gohan actually lands a hit in Goku's stomach that he doesn't expect and wins him a little bit. Anyway, it was a good fight. Obviously, they stopped and Gohan probably had something else to do. So Goku still needs to find a training partner. Goten mentions Krillin and Goku is out like that. Gone to find Krillin. The whole vibe from this episode seems to be that Krillin has gotten soft. I mean, previously in Dragon Ball Z, Krillin is at a level where bullets should not harm him. If Krillin's in a situation where his guard is up, the bullets should not affect him. But in this episode, we see Krillin push an officer out of the way of a bullet and it shoots through his arm. Goku's obviously a little bit shocked that Krillin got hurt, and so is 18. 18 calls him a spineless weakling. Now, the vibe in the room seemed pretty tense, but I am assuming that 18 is saying that out of love for her husband, she wants him to go back to training, to being the badass that she fell in love with. I mean, Krillin, by all rights, should be the strongest human being on the face of the planet. He's trained by the best and fought with the best, but somewhere along the way, Krillin's gotten soft. He's not as strong as he once was. So Krillin hearing this from the two most important people in his world, it must be devastating for him. Realizing he wants to make them proud, he decides that he will fight with Goku. While sparring together, they both decide that they'll go back to Master Roshi and they'll train with him. Again, we know Goku's obviously stronger than everyone that he's trying to spar with, especially Krillin. Master Roshi agrees to train them, gets them to spar each other, but puts Goku in a full turtle suit. Now, if you're familiar with Dragon Ball, the way that they trained was they did ordinary, everyday stuff, but with a huge turtle shell on their back. Now, obviously, it's something they've used throughout the whole Dragon Ball series. They use weighted training to be stronger, to be faster. In this case, I assume that the full turtle suit was just to restrict Goku's movements, uh, to make it a lot heavier because he can take it and because he would be able to crush Krillin quite easily in his normal state. Even though Goku had this huge disadvantage, it didn't stop him and Krillin could not hit him. Krillin couldn't keep up, couldn't hit him, and as Goku was about to hit him, Master Roshi stops the fight. That too must be putting a lot of doubt in Krillin's mind. So the next day they get told to run an errand to find a herb. They go to the island where it is, they see a uh, fortune teller Baba. Baba, if you can remember, is that old lady on a crystal ball. It's cool to see her come back in. They walk into this cave, it's airy, it's spooky. Then they see all the enemies that they have fought together in the past. Nappa and Vegeta from Saiyan Saga were there. We had the Ginyu Force, Frieza, Cell, Boo. All these people Krillin and Goku have fought together. The one that seemed to surprise Krillin the most, though, was that big green thing with wings. Now, if you're familiar with Dragon Ball, that is Tambourine. He was the first person to kill Krillin. So yes, Demon King Piccolo and Tambourine were there. Now, like I said before, Krillin is at a stage where he should be able to kill Tambourine no sweat. But he's gotten soft, and to me, these episodes seem like it'll be building up Krillin's confidence. He is in the next arc, so I'd say it'll just be him getting back his fighting spirit and wanting to be a part of the fight. In the next episode, we see them all fighting. Uh, Krillin's starting to get his nerve back. Uh, Goku and Krillin both do a team Kamehameha. It should be a good one. I'm pretty excited, but uh, enough about this episode. It was good, but the end was better. Now, people in the Dragon Ball community, we've been talking a lot about what the other gods will look like, what the arc will be like, how many strong characters will there be. We finally get a little taste of what's to come. Let's just quickly break down this 15 seconds of footage because it was insane. There was a lot going on at one time and let's just talk about it. Obviously, we see Kaba going Super Saiyan. He's obviously mastered the Super Saiyan transformation. I'd like to see him go Super Saiyan 2. But he looks cool. He looks like he's going to be really strong. We see Frost doing his thing, transforming. He is still a strong fighter. And I assume that this tournament 
doesn't have too many rules. I'd say every universe just wants to use the strongest people they have, whether they be good or not, they just need them in their team. I mean, Frost is obviously strong enough to be in this tournament anyway, but just adding in his villainy, his intelligence, the way that he likes to deceive people uh, makes him a really big asset for the universe. The biggest thing in this trailer, the thing that broke the internet today, we get a female saying she seems normal and then we see her take on a transformation very similar to the legendary Super Saiyan Broly. She quadruples in size, makes her like the biggest person there. She has the uh, gold gauntlets that are on her wrists. And she has a green tinged hair. I mean, everyone knows what this means. Obviously, uh, Broly is a big fan favorite, even though he was not canon in the story. But it seems like the people in Toei, the super team, uh, Akira Toriyama, everyone has heard uh, cries for a Broly character. We don't get Broly necessarily, but we get a character very similar. I'm very interested with this one. I'm very interested to see her backstory, most of all. Obviously, we know... Broly was the uh, legendary Super Saiyan, his hair was different, he was stronger, he was faster, he looked super cool. But Broly was supposed to be the strongest Saiyan ever, so I'd really like to see her backstory and see uh, what she is. Uh, is it just the same as like what we have with Broly? Is she going to be a legendary Super Saiyan or is she just going to have this different transformation to everyone else? Then we get a quick glance at some of the new gods, I mean really quickly it was super fast we see some maybe some little black thing in the corner i have no idea what he is that black little furry thing some huge green dude uh we have champa already there we see guasa's god of destruction is a big pink elephant then we get the one piece crossover we get the buggy the clown lookalike god of destruction with a harley quinn weiss the buggy god of destruction the harley quinn angel uh, the little short Kai that's there, they have a hooded man next to them. They're the only universe that I've seen with someone in a hood, so I'm really interested to see who he is. This trailer is full with too much hype, too much epicness. We have no idea what's going on, but we get really cool visuals on what we're expecting to happen. Goku fighting a dog-like creature. We see Vegeta fighting some pink monster that looks like Dumpling from Team 4 Star. We're only two more weeks away from the survival arc. What did you guys think about uh, episode 75? Did you like it? Uh, did you think it was okay? But more importantly, how does everyone feel about this new trailer that came out? I mean, the hypest thing about it is probably this female Broly character. I mean, Broly's obviously a fan favorite, and now we get to see someone just like him, more like a tribute to Broly, someone that we get in the main story, main continuity. I'm excited. How do you guys feel about it? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, just here the saying, sub to me, click that on anything. It'll get you subscribed to me. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. I'm saying sub to me. Catch you guys next time.